in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today's a day to talk about, about family, both uh, some helpful and some unhelpful. Years ago, there was a family I knew where parents got together, and each of the parents uh, had some children, and they created a bigger family. And the oldest from one family made it his job to pick on the youngest from the other family. It was good, very sad. And the oldest was 10 or 11, and this young one was about six or so, had a learning disability, and this older child was pretty cruel and pretty merciless and pretty, pretty deliberately mean to this younger kid. And it was a very sad thing to see, especially for this young six-year-old kid who had nowhere else to go. It was, it was a dysfunctional family. You know, when, when we get hurt at, from people, that's just part of life. But when we're hurt by people who are close to us, who are family, who we're tied so to, that is really injurious. This was not a healthy family. And they, the family we read about today of Joseph was not a healthy family either. And they were really unhealthy. The family of Joseph struggled with some big issues. They struggled with this issue of favoritism because Joseph, as we heard, gave this multicolored coat, if you've seen that Broadway show. He gave gifts to to his favorite youngest son, Joseph, that he didn't give to the others. And this caused envy, and it caused cruelty on behalf of these brothers, and it caused hatred on behalf of the brothers. So much so that they conspired to, to murder Joseph. They sold him into slavery, which was the same, considered the same as murder. And then they had to conspire together to hide this from their father, which they did for decades. Terrible. Now, poor Joseph. He was a, a, an arrogant and an inappropriate 17-year-old kid. But goodness, did he deserve that? And then, and then once he was, was taken in slavery, he actually found a pretty good position, but then... The household he was in, the wife of the, the master of the household accuses him of, of attacking her, and he goes back to jail for another 10 plus years. These are kind of bad things I'm talking about, aren't they? Now we know bad. We know the difference between good and bad, don't we? We know the difference between good and, and, and terrible. Do you know the difference? Because your ancestors ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So you know, that we know, all of us, we know what's good and what's evil. We know what's helpful and not. Or do we? There was a man who, who worked at Kmart or Walmart. And he goes to lunch and he chokes on a piece of steak. Good or bad? <coughs> Probably a bad thing, huh? Take yeah, good thing, Carol, thank you. But so they take him to the hospital, and they find out he has throat cancer. Got a good or a bad discovery? It's kind of, kind of good, and they take care of it. They, they operate him, it's fine. While in the hospital, they run a check on him, and they find out he has an arrest warrant on him. So when he's recovered, they send him to jail. Good or bad? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. But while he's in jail, he has time to learn a new skill. And he becomes an excellent cook. A chef. Good or bad? So he gets out of jail, he goes back to Walmart, and you find out they're not going to hire him. His job is gone. Good or bad? Bad. So he goes home, and he starts practicing his cooking skill, and he, he gets really good at it. 
and he gets a job as a cook. Good or bad? Good. And he goes and he starts his first day and he cooks this great meal of beef stroganoff and he gives it to his boss and his boss chokes to death on the piece of meat. Good or bad? Who knows? You know, we think we know what's good. We think we know what's bad. And all we know is our little story that we live in. All we know is the day-to-day -day lower story that we live out. We don't know God's story. We don't know the upper story. We do not know God's plan. And they're hard to see. All we can do is live in our lower story and trust God has a better story than we think we might have. And this is what Joseph did. Joseph embraced and trusted in God's upper story. And look what happened. Joseph gets arrested, gets thrown into slavery, gets arrested once he gets to Egypt and spends a, time, a decade in, in prison. And in that time, he trusted God, and in that time, his character is forged. He becomes a man, and he becomes a man who is strong enough to take care of a huge crisis when famine comes to his region. And he saves how many hundreds of thousands of people from starving to death because he had learned the skills to, to manage crisis like that. We see Joseph living out God's story, trusting he has a plan. And what happens to Israel? A fledgling little country north of Egypt that would have starved to death and disappeared. But because Joseph was capable of his job, because God had put him there, Israel survives extermination. And God has a country and a nation to build upon. We see Joseph living out what Paul says in Romans, all things, even rotten things, all things work together for good for those who love God. We see Joseph understanding what Isaiah proclaimed, your ways are not my ways. We see Joseph accepting what the Apostle John meant when he said, in this world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. We see Joseph living out Paul's letter to the Corinthians when he says, live by faith and not by just what you see happening. We see Joseph holding on to Jeremiah's words. I have plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. See, Joseph is a man who holds on to the hope and understanding that God's story, the upper story, is about blessing. And our lower story can be difficult day to day. But it's not the same story. God is going to bless us in our story. Joseph trusted in God's plan and didn't understand it all the time, I'm sure. and probably didn't agree with it when he was sitting in jail. But we see Joseph blessed. He spent 22 of his years in some pretty tough situations, in prison and in slavery. But he spent 71 of his years commanding armies of people that are saving God's people. And that he is in control of Pharaoh's kingdom. We see Joseph blessed far more than in difficulty. God says, love me, trust me, hold on to me. And he gives each of us our own story to act out. And he gives each of us our own place to be. And in that story that he gives us, he gives us blessing. And then we kind of get off track and we, we kind of do our own story. And we kind of, you know, I, I know my story better than yours, but we kind of do it our way. And he says, wait, come back.
back to my story. It's better for you than your own story. Come on back. Let's start over. I have blessings. God wants to bless us with his storyline. And you know what's really exciting? St. Paul is a place where he does that. This church is a community where people hear God's story for them, where people understand how they are part of it, where people are equipped and encouraged to live out that story. This morning, we accepted two new members of God's kingdom. Their parents are going to teach them the story God has for them. Are we set up? Are we excited about supporting parents to tell their children about God's story? Yesterday, I was at a funeral for Tao's father. Tao's one of our, our key leaders in, in our monk congregation. His father passed away in a car accident last week. I was down in Fresno for, a, for the funeral. And there were 200 people, maybe, maybe more, in this funeral hall. And many of them were not Christians. And they're being preached to by Pastor Ku and Pastor Dua about, about God's story for them. And, and they're hearing it, some of them, for kind of the first time. Are we set up to invest heavily in that community where God is bringing people to hear his word? That's what St. Paul's about. We have a school right over, right over here where parents are struggling with relationships and demands on their time and, and money issues. This place is set up to be the words and the place of proclamation for that community that God has a story to, for those families. Are we set up to support those families in hearing that story? St. Paul is a place where God is at work to tell his story. Are we, are we able to do that? I think so. God is able to turn difficult situations into blessings. And we tell that story here. Remember that little kid I was talking about who was picked on? His name is Bill Marshall. And Bill grew up and he was really damaged by his picking up. And he actually moved to a different country. He moved to Australia. Had, he got married, had three kids. And a few years ago, Mary and I went to visit him. Because I needed to, I needed to apologize for being a terrible older stepbrother. Those were really rotten things I did to him, and I needed to ask his forgiveness for being a total jerk all those years. And he gave me that forgiveness, and I think that's when I realized the power of receiving unconditional forgiveness. And, and on that visit, I gave his older son, who was about 10, a Bible. Now in Australia, particularly in Sydney, not a very Christian part of the world. But I gave, I gave my nephew this Bible, and he, he looked at, up at me with this, this enthusiasm, this enthusiasm and he said, I believe this stuff so excited to receive that Bible. And I thought, wow, right gift at the right time. <coughs> See, God used a really terrible older brother who did really terrible things to bless all of us. I received forgiveness. Bill felt so much better than his older brother, Bill. Carried enough. And my nephew, my nephew was, was supported in his pain. It's part of my story. We all have stories. You have stories and you're in the middle of them. 
We are a place that is here to equip you to hold on to those stories, to trust God, to believe his ways are not your ways, to know that he has overcome the world and so were you, so will you, and to trust that he has blessings in place for you. Our Lord is with you. He will guide you. He will understand you. He will give you strength to live out your story, and he will be, bring blessing to you for it. Because he is with you and he can turn what looks terrible to you into something beautiful. That's what he does. That's what he wants for you. In Jesus' name.